Well, good day, everyone. Today, we have a Toyota 86. All right, so what we got going in this today, first off, how's everybody doing this morning? Sorry if I missed that, glad to hear it. On this guy here, what we have happening is we're gonna go and put y'all's favorite radio in. An ILX 107. That can only mean one of two things. He has an iPhone or he's an Apple lover because after the end of the day, you guys know that's an Apple lover's radio. That right there is his MacBook. He's an Apple lover. What we got going on is we're gonna go ahead and put this new radio in this car. He brought a dash kit we're gonna use in Maestro RR. Honestly, I just wanna get into it and see what's going on. So let's get into it, see what's going on. So I'm no expert on these, even though I know it was a Subaru Toyota Venture and now that the Scion line is gone, this car remains, which is a cool thing because honestly, this is one of the coolest cars Toyota has ever made recently. Not gonna include the other really cool ones that they used to make, but so this has a nice suede. We don't normally talk about the interior of cars, but this was really nice. When I was younger, I had a Mitsubishi Eclipse and that was right when Mitsubishi got popular back in the 90s for a minute. You know, they had like the 3000 GT and they came out with the turbos and all that. And I bought an Eclipse and it was like, I think I paid like 11,000 bucks for it back then, new and I know oh god right okay and it was like it was this little sports car that looked so cool for its day you know it had a little bump in the hood and it was fast looking and yeah it was nice that's what I like about this car is that it, it you know if you're a young person and you want a sporty car that isn't gonna kill you as far as the price goes this it was great I'm glad they kept it because this is a car that we need on the road and I think they did a really nice job on it too it's it's a very sexy appealing car but with all that being said you really don't don't want my opinion on cars let's put this radio in shall we we're getting ready to take the dash off but funny thing we noticed that the factory radio is actually mounted crooked there's a gap here no gap here gap here no gap here so this is actually crooked in this nice suede bezel that's kind of cool not that really <laughs> all right let's get this thing out so this panel here just pops off as you just saw that's it. Now there's four 10 millimeter bolts that hold this in place. And I'm pretty sure that's where the easy is gonna end. Oh, it's really tight. So these four white harnesses here, you have these two on the bottom. These are gonna be for the non-amplified stereo. These two bigger ones are gonna be for your auxiliary, your backup camera, steering wheel controls. And then this size, use the antenna and the USB. The other thing to keep in mind is like, <laughs> this is an amplified antenna. We talk about those all the time. This little black wire here, that's gonna need to see 12 volts. So make sure that when you plug your, after, your antenna adapter in it, it has a blue wire on it that you do hook up. Otherwise you get crappy FM reception. So the fact Factory radio is a uh, thinner, it's not a single din, it's like a din and a half. You have this little area right here, it almost looks like a Sony, but it is made by Pioneer. All right, let's go see what we got. So normally in one of these kits, you'd need the 958202 Metra or the comparable best kits. That's gonna be these guys right here. What's unique about these, you can see this is nice and flat across the top. And the only reason why I bring that up is because he went and got the Subaru alternatives, which are these. These are made to screw onto the Subaru radio. These are made to screw onto the Subaru radio. The difference is, as you can see, it has this nice bow to it that may or may not work for us. So we're gonna test those out. These are also nice and shiny black, so they'll look good in the car. We're gonna try these first. And then if those don't work or it looks bad, we'll just resort to these guys here. Now, he also brought us the antenna adapter, which is the 40-LX11 from Metra. Best Kits also makes one of these. And then, of course, like I said at the intro, we are gonna use the RR, and the corresponding harness for that is the T01. Went ahead and already flashed this. We've got plenty of videos where we show you how to do that. If you don't know, check out one of the earlier ones, but it's pretty straightforward. It comes with a USB, just plugs into here. You plug it into the computer, you go to their website. It's actually the only instructions that come in the box are how to flash it. Now, I strongly recommend you download, if you remap the steering wheel controls, print that out so you know what they're doing. In this case, we switched source for push to talk or VR. We also went ahead and printed off the instruction manual. You definitely want to do this. Really the most important page is number four, but but if you have to go hunt for wires, six and five are helpful. And of course, getting it, you, you definitely wanna read page three. This is how you hook it up. All right, we'll set this aside for right now. Because we're doing a 107 and it's an Alpine, it comes with a bag of stuff. 
All right, so let's go ahead and open this TL1 right here and see what comes in the box. Oh, look at that. They've made an improvement to the OBD2. So normally you see where we go ahead and tape up this because I don't want these wires. These are sensitive wires. They went ahead and put some flex loom over it. That's awesome. Believe it or not, they actually do updates to the harnesses. Usually there is a, yeah, there's a sticker here that'll give you the update. The first thing we got here is our backup camera retention. These two are going to be for those two little plugs that we had in the dash. This guy here is if you have the amplified stereo and you need to convert it over to the non-amplified plug so like if you had a jbl system this would plug into that and this would plug into this that way you don't have both these harnesses these these harnesses here chilling out like this to confuse people so that's kind of nice now we're gonna go ahead and cut the tape open because honestly i don't trust because of some of the experiences we've had. I'm hoping we won't find anything like that, but we're gonna open it nonetheless. But if you don't wanna do that, everything is broken off into a nice little plug system. Here's your auxiliary adapter here. So that that is good and, and it, it's, it's a, well, look, it, the harness looks good. More than likely, what I'm gonna do is just gonna open this bundle here so I can see behind it. If that's clean, we'll go ahead and tape it back up and leave it just the way it is. Now, the secret to cutting through this style tape is for one, you want a super sharp blade, brand new blade preferably, um, or a seam ripper where you can come in underneath it so you don't cut the wires. All right, peeling it open, we see some solder connections. So it looks good underneath the tape. So we'll go ahead and just peel off this born on date sticker, tape this guy back up. All right, let's go ahead and before we go all crazy on taping this up, let's go ahead and take this into the car, plug it all in so we can see where everything needs to go. Grab the brain here first. We're gonna plug these things in to see. All right, so go ahead and unplug this guy. You don't wanna leave this plugged in when you're testing it. This is the last thing to get plugged in. Four plugs that go into it, they all fit. All right, let's take this into the car. So my guess is this guy right here is the backup camera because the backup camera, as you can see, only has bare wires. I think we actually have an adapter for this made by PAC. I'm gonna go check that. This one here doesn't plug into anything. And then the smaller of the two little pigtails, this one doesn't plug into anything. All right, so we have our Bluetooth mic run. Just be careful when you run it under the dash because under the dash is sharp metal. That's what we always put loom. Now I thought that Maestro made this part here and they might. Uh, we don't stock it because we stock this one which is the Pack Cam TY12. And what this guy is here is this is a camera retention and or addition to a Toyota. So this will allow you to, if you have a Toyota radio, let's say like this guy here and it doesn't have a backup camera, you just plug this guy in. And what happens most of the time is it senses the resistance from the camera, wakes up the feature in the radio and you can add a backup camera to your factory radio. Or in this case, if you had a backup camera and you wanted to interrupt it somehow, you could do that too, because this allows you to interrupt your backup camera so you can feed something into that. In our case, we want it for this end. This is gonna allow us to plug into that factory cable and plug the antenna in so that we can attach these wires here to this, make like a hybrid adapter, and that way we won't have to cut up his factory connector. So now there's, there's four wires here, and looking at this, the black and the blue yellow are gonna be your power, and then the brown and the yellow are gonna be your camera signal. So that's gonna be these four wires here on this plug. So what that means is we can go ahead and remove all these other wires. We're not gonna need them. And at the end of the day, really the only two wires we need to hook up on this are the power. We can go ahead and remove this tape and get rid of this RCA. Might not though, might actually solder it in because of how long this is and this is kind of short. But let's go ahead and clean up this plug real quick. All right, so we've gone ahead and retrofit this all up. How this went down is the red wire here, the blue, yellow is the power wire. It explains right here what each one of the wires is doing. Black is ground on this, yellow goes to yellow, and then there's a brown here that's gonna go to signal black. And there again, it's all right here. Now we'll go ahead and get this taped up. 
All right, so we have our tree branch, I mean wiring harness, all set and ready to go. Here's our backup camera, so this side of it is done. So there's two other cables we need according to this. One is the audio and one is the data cable. Now here's where this gets tricky. If you have the auxiliary in the dash and you wish to retain it, that's what this RCA is for. If your car has backup sensors or anything that creates audio, that's what this cable is for. Not all radios have two inputs for this. So if we grab the harness that comes with the Alpine, that's this guy right here, and it has the iData link connector which is in the same bag as the main powering harness that's this guy plug into here like this and then over here we have this which is your one and only aux input if you want to do this you know you have to go rca to aux and to here if you have backup sensors or anything like that then you're going to lose the ability to retain that aux on this particular radio because you're going to need to use this harness right here that plugs into the brain like this, and then is going to plug into the one and only aux jack like that. So this would be used for any situation where like say the XM tuner is external, there's a backup sensor, or anything that makes noise through the radio other than something the radio is generating. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead, we have this aux to RCA here. We're gonna go ahead and shrink wrap cover these, and we're gonna plug this into our aux jack instead of this so that we can retain the aux jack. So when you go to mount the dash kit, what you need to do first is go ahead and remove the brackets off the factory radio and it never fails no matter how many times i do this there'll always be one screw that even though it's a phillips somehow got tightened down way too tight and won't come off it'll strip be prepared it's an eight millimeter if you need to remove it with the socket now that you have those off you're pretty much done with this guy right here we'll go ahead and put the alpine bag over it it's got a screen save that for later now these have a nice l and r on them so we'll grab the left one now this Subaru kit came with a bag of screws and a piece of foam. We just want to screw it on and see how it looks. So regardless of whatever kit, you're going to have a space on top and bottom. Mm -hmm. All right, so looking at it on there, there is going to be a gap in top and bottom, which is regardless of whether or not you're going to use these. We'll go ahead and put our weather stripping black foam on top and bottom here to cover that in. But these fit good, so we'll go ahead and do the next one. Now because this is a short chassis design meaning it's like a only the bottom these top screws aren't going to screw in anything so what we're going to do is once we get this in we'll go ahead and put a nut and bolt through that to hold those together so that it doesn't try to spread apart on the top now the one thing that i want to do is that we, we've bolted these in and I want to put a brace across the top here to, to bring these back in because they're sitting about an eighth of an inch off. So I'm going to cut a piece of plastic and screw these in like this so that this stays nice and secure. So we went ahead and screwed a piece of plastic across here. What we want to do is make sure we check this gapping here and here so that the, the lines stay the same. You don't want to get it too tight and you don't want to get it too loose. You just want it to be straight and now it's looking pretty straight. All right, so looking at it with this on, what we want to do is put our foam on the silver part here. See what that looks like first. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to line it up with this little groove right here across it. And then just bring that over to the other side. And then repeat the same thing on the bottom. All right, now we're done with this. We can go ahead and set it aside. The one last piece of this puzzle is finishing up the harness. So we have the Alpine harness, we have our antenna adapter. On this guy here, we have a bunch of wires. If you don't know what these side of the wires mean, we can refer back to our installation manual on page four like we were on. It'll go ahead and tell us what these things do. They're standard colors. However, the Alpine is not. So we'll take a brief minute to go over that. Some of these are normal, some of them aren't. You have your yellow, black, and red, which yellow is constant 12 volts black is ground red is accessory those are all the same you have your eight speaker wires they come in pairs white is driver's front gray is passenger front green is driver's rear and purple is passenger rear the striped version of those is the negative you have a blue white and a blue the blue white is going to be the amplifier turn on or also called the remote turn on the blue is going to be your antenna turn on this is what's going to connect to this guy right here now if your radio doesn't have two wires like this i suggest 
suggest connecting this blue wire to your accessory wire and not your amplifier turn on. A lot of the times these draw more amperage than these can handle. There is a yellow blue, which is your emergency brake bypass. If you want to do any form of interface bypass, just go ahead and pick yourself up the micro bypass for the Pioneer. It's gonna hook up the same way. The Pioneer case, the light green wire is the brake wire. And in this case, the yellow blue is the brake wire. And then the last one, and this is the one that gets everybody is the orange white. On everyone else's radio, orange white is illumination. On an Alpine, orange white is the reverse wire. You can hook most of these up color for color until you get to the orange white, which is right here. Cap it off. There is no wired light control on an Alpine. It's controlled through a photo strobe on the face of the radio. So now all we have to do, get these attached to here and we'll be all good to go. All right, so we have our harness all soldered up. We're gonna go ahead and put our shrink wrap over all the ends here so that we can get this guy into the car. So anytime you do the shrink wrap like this, I always like to let it cool to touch before I tape it up because I don't want it, it's still kind of soft. I don't want to squish them together and make them stick. So why this is cooling off, we'll go ahead and look at page three. This is what's going to tell us how to hook it up to the car. We'll go ahead and skip down here till it says plug in the OBD2 connector, plug the aftermarket harness into the aftermarket radio, connect the backup camera, connect the RCAs, plug in the data port, insert the audio cable, talks about the in Pioneer radios which would also mean Alpine in this case, plug the audio cable and the auxiliary input of the radio, connect the harness to the RR master module, then test your installation. Summarizing, this is plug this in to the car, plug it into the radio, and then when you're done, plug in the RR last. And then of course, test everything. All right, I'm gonna let this cool down just a little bit more before I apply my tape, and I'll meet you guys in the car. So the Bluetooth mic, as you can see, Fernando mounted up above the mirror, and then the GPS antenna, way up there at the very tip of the light, right, right there, you can see where the GPS antenna is mounted and that of course was up up there in the dash on the driver's side so like i said we have the harness this tree branch all set ready to go start plugging her in start with the main power harness first go ahead and plug in the camera harness plug in our everything else harness and then we'll grab our antenna adapter we have our obd2 connector plug that in and that's all the stuff that needs to get plugged into the harness itself so now we'll go ahead and tuck this down here a bit just to get it out of the way some we have our alpine radio let's go ahead and get this guy plugged in Now what we want to do is go ahead and plug in the RR. I like to plug the power plug in last. And also when you're pushing these guys in, make sure they're plugged in all the way. Let's get on there and push them really hard. Go ahead and turn the car on. So we're hearing that chime. That's telling us that the chime is not passing through the radio like in some cars it does. That's going to give us the ability to retain that auxiliary. The right here. All right. So our steering wheel controls work. We just want to test the push to talk, which is the mode button. Oh, press and hold actually turns on gauges. Press. What's the weather like today? It's currently part. So the mode button, we actually made multifunction. If you press and hold it, it'll go ahead and bring up the gauges. X out of that. So it looks like all our stuff is working currently. We're gonna, we just have our USB plugged into the back of the rate. We'll go ahead and get this into the car and try our USB again. Now for the 107, the only thing you need the USB for is either A, wired CarPlay, or B, doing a software update. That's it. Everything else is done wirelessly. And the nice thing about the 107 is it is a recessed USB, so it doesn't stick out at all. Now the factory radio was in the dash crooked. We want to make sure we don't have that same problem. So we'll go ahead and test fit this real quick. Yeah, it looks good. What's the weather like today? It's currently partly clear. All right, so the factory the USB the works. Turn. Once we got it put back together and we were worried about testing CarPlay, we forgot we added a backup camera to this, so we needed to test the backup camera. Guess what? Didn't work. The camera probably works fine. The trigger into the radio doesn't. For some reason, the iData harness doesn't actually pin in where the factory reverse wire is. Let me show you where it's at. So here is the iData connection right here. This orange wire right here is actually the analog reverse trigger. For some reason, this is not creating a digital reverse trigger. What we have to do now is go ahead and pin into this harness 
to this orange white wire here that's in pin number two on the top. We'll go ahead, tap into that. We'll run a wire into our orange white wire here. Ironically, they're both orange white. That's kind of silly. And then once we do that, we'll be able to get our reverse trigger so we can move forward with integrating the factory backup camera into the radio. All right, throw in reverse. And there we go. Now we have the cool reverse. Now these cones, these are part of the Alpine system and they are adjustable. So you can move them if you want or turn them off because the factory camera has them as well. So we can tap on here and we say guide off and they'll go away. You can also move the caution to the bottom if you have an Alpine. So if you know, you're one of those guys that hates the caution on the top. Now, if you notice, see how this plus sign here, that is off center. See how you have a bigger gap here and a smaller gap here. This is gonna happen because the camera is off center with the center of the rear of the car. This is your center point. This is nice that they've done this because otherwise you could back out weird. That is always one of the problems when you retain the factory backup camera. If they don't put it dead center, it's always gonna be off because some of the times what the manufacturers will do is they'll actually use a camera DSP to zoom in to get it centered because they know what's wrong. So here's a close up view of that shiny black. Looks good. I like it. All right, guys, this has been the Toyota 86. So hopefully this helps you guys out if you have one of these cars and you want to do a radio in it. Pretty nice. If you're on the forums and you probably can find a link to those Subaru trim panels that he got for this. I'm assuming that's how he found them. All right, guys, thank you for watching as always. All right, so if you like this video, please subscribe, share, like. You know where you find us, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. You guys have a great night as always. We'll see you later next time. Bye.